I'm Ashley Robles, and this is Microsis. While ideas of organisms that could not be seen by the naked eye have existed since ancient times, the most accepted hypotheses and theories did not arise until the late 1600s. During the 17th century's scientific boom, English scientist Robert Hooke would be the first to observe cells. He gave them that name when he observed thinly sliced pieces of cork underneath a microscope, and would later write about these findings in his book Micrographia in 1665. Around the same time, a Dutch draper named Anton von Leeuwenhoek was perfecting the craft of lens making. Originally seeing a simple microscope during his apprenticeship, Leeuwenhoek would develop a fascination with them. In his spare time, he would observe and take careful notes of anything he could get his hands on. The work he is most known for are his observations of lake water, where he observed microorganisms calling them animalcules, or tiny animals. This discovery is why Leeuwenhoek is often referred to as the father of microbiology. At some point during both Hook and Leeuwenhoek's scientific careers, the two met at the Royal Society of London and became colleagues. Their combined discoveries, paired with their co-invention of the microscope, would bring modern microbiology into existence. By the 1800s, the debate was no longer, what do microorganisms look like, but where do they come from? At this time, the most common belief was in spontaneous generation. This is the belief that organisms could come into existence from nothing. This theory would remain unchallenged until a group of scientists made it their life's mission. As early as 1688, Italian biologist and physician Francesco Redi published his experiments on the generation of insects. In the experiments, he sought to test the prevailing idea that maggots come from rotting meat. Redi placed pieces of rotting veal into three jars. He covered one with gauze, one with cork, and left the other completely open. As the meat rotted, flies laid their eggs on top of the jar covered in gauze and the one that was open, but not on the one covered in cork. This experiment proved that without eggs, no worms would appear. In 1746, Lazaro Spallanzani heated broth in tightly sealed flasks. He sterilized these flasks and found that no organisms arose from the container. Following Spallanzani's findings, Louis Pasteur would expand on this experiment. He would first filter air through a cotton plug and demonstrate that air is filled with microorganisms that could normally contaminate the broth. He did a second experiment using a swan flask, boiling and sterilizing the broth then leaving it and allowing bacteria and dust to settle in the neck. Pasteur found that no matter how long you left the flask, the broth would remain sterile until the flask was tilted and the bacteria and dust fell into the broth, allowing the bacteria to once again multiply. Since many scientists could not replicate these results, scientist John Tyndall tested these infusions for himself. He found that some infusions required different boiling times than others to become sterile. Some broths, however, did not become sterile even after hours upon hours of boiling, due to some sort of heat-resistant microorganism. It would be Ferdinand Cohn, a German botanist, who would identify these as endospores. The same year, Cohn also divided bacteria into morphological groups. These included sphericals, short rods, threads, and spirals. This relatively recent discovery of endospores would help German physician Robert Koch understand the transmission of diseases such as anthrax. The theory that Koch tested is today known as Koch's postulates. First, the microbe must be present in all cases of the disease and absent from all healthy organisms. Second, the suspected microbe must be isolated and grown in a pure culture. Third, the same disease must result when the isolated microbe is inoculated into a healthy host. And fourth, the same microbe must be isolated from the diseased host. It is from the discoveries of these great men that we continue to discover so much about the microbial world and why we continue to ask questions and find new answers every day. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe. I will be making new videos about more microbiology history. I will be talking about morphology in the future. I will be talking about diseases, viruses, etc. If you would like to support the show, please go fund on Patreon and become a patron. There will be special perks every month, including a live show, and you can also ask new questions that you want me to cover on here, as well as other topics about microbiology or small science. You can find Microsis here on social media, and you can find me here. Until then, continue learning, and I will see you guys next time.